howdy doody everyone welcome back to my channel so if you don't know me or you're new here hello i'm jazz and i'm a nail technician today i'm going to be doing something a little bit different than what i normally do we're going to be going with like a blue uh, sort of tortoise shell design so today i'm going to be using passionate blue from phoenix glitter and sheer paradise which is the clear acrylic to cap i will put the discount code on screen so you can save some money I'm also going to be using some crystals from Raven Cosmetics. These are Precocia crystals, I think is how you pronounce it. I do actually go in with gold ones, which are the champagne mix. They are really pretty, and I wanted the gold and brown sort of colour to match the tortoise shell design. I'm also going to be using a selection of nail cummy, ugh, nail cummy gel polish colours to create um, the tortoise shell design and I will sort of go into more detail when it comes to using those as to what colours I've used. People do tortoise shell designs in so many different ways, I'm just going to show you the way that I found to work, I like it when you can have quite a bit of depth in there with different shades and colours and things so I'll show you my sort of way to do it. To start with I'm going to do three of these nail tips in passionate blue. Now one of them is going to be all over passionate blue, this is the one I'm doing now, ignore the fact it's not applying as nice as I want. I always find the first tip or the first set of nails I do of the day, it never goes to plan. The rest of them came out fine so it was just this one. Um, so I'm going to do this one all over and I do start to work in wetter beads just to kind of build up the coverage on this tip um the colors are very very pigmented so i like to give my brush a good clean in between each one because i don't want to um discolor my monomer too much and um, then once i've got full coverage on that first tip i'm going to put that to the side to set up and then i'm going to go in and do a half and half on the remaining two tips that i'm going to do with the blue and I alternate the half and half on each one. So this first one, as you can see, I'm getting my cuticle line much nicer. And as you can see, it's applying much neater. It's, it's, it's that blooming first, first nail curse. Um, it's probably not a curse. Um, I'm rambling. So I'm then going to, what was I saying? Oh yes, I'm going to do the half and half design. I've been at a training course all day. I've been doing lashes and brow training today. And, um, I loved it, it was fantastic, but I've done so much learning. I think my brain has gone a little bit fried. It's not a bad thing, not a bad thing, but it just means that you're going to have to listen to me mumble and talk a load of nonsense for probably most of this video. Anyway, so I'm doing this half and half nail. I do make myself giggle. Um, and I'm kind of putting the acrylic where I want, and I'm then using the belly and the sort of tip of my brush to get that sort of halfway line right don't worry if it's not 100 percent perfect because we're going to be putting some foil over the two different designs to kind of hide any um joining line um and you can also file it back as well if you needed to so i'm going to just um put as much blue on here until i'm happy you don't have to do blue you could do a different color i just thought blue and tortoiseshell was a combination i hadn't really seen before but it works really well together. I was pleasantly surprised with how this came out. Um, so I'm just going to build up the intensity and the coverage until I'm happy. Don't worry if it adds a bit of bulk to the side because you can file this down and um, you know bring your shape back in. So it's not a problem. Obviously if you were doing this on a client you could either sculpt out or if you were using tips you'd really to find that shape and then put your acrylic on because acrylic obviously adds bulk. For the final tip that we're doing with the blue, we're going to do exactly the same thing but on the other end of the tip. So we're just going to put this at the bottom actual tip end um, and build it out and then I will be back. I do also cap these in the clear once they're all set up and give them a good file as well. So I've capped and filed the other ones off camera and I'm just going to show you how I do my tortoise shell design. So I'm using this flat gel brush, it's really pretty, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my sort of base. 
So I am using Honeysuckle uh, Gel Polish from Nail Chemi and I'm mixing it into some top coat. And I'm then going to add in a tiny little bit of Sea Nymph and I'm going to give that a mix. Add in some more top coat. The reason I've added the top coat is it just kind of shears it out a little bit um, so it's not as opaque. So I'm going to put this all over my tip. And I'm using the brush because obviously I can mix it and I can then obviously get a nice coverage on here. It's better to work in thinner layers. You should, when you're doing gel polish anyway, you should work in thinner layers um, just so you know that you've got a proper cure. But I work in the thinner layers so I can build it up. You also don't want to work too thick and add any extra bulk to the nail. Um, working thinner will reduce the amount of bulk that's there. And it just means you can really focus on getting the details and the little bits of depth. So I'm going to do this to both tips and then I'm going to cure this in my lamp. So I've cleaned my brush off and I'm now going to put some top coat, just a thin layer all over the tip. And I'm not going to cure this. When I put my next shade on, it's going to kind of make it bloom and spread a little bit, which is what you want to get those sort of feathered, blended edges of the tortoise shell design. If you didn't want to do the sort of blooming step, then you don't have to. If you've got a blooming gel, that also works. So the colour that I'm taking next is Coco. Um, again, it's a nail chemi colour. And I'm just kind of doing random sort of splodges. I don't want them to be perfectly cir perfectly circular. Perfectly cir I don't want them to be the perfect circle. Um, but I also don't want them to be odd shapes either. So I'm kind of just going in where I sort of think and putting them on. Obviously we've got the top coat on there as well. So it's going to bloom them out. And it's going to kind of feather any of those little edges. So they're not really harsh as well. So I'm going to do this on both tips and then I'm going to cure it in my lamp once I'm happy. You don't have to do big circles, you can do smaller ones if you wanted to, to kind of fill up any blank space. And no tortoise is exactly the same, so each nail can be a little bit unique. Once you've done that and cured both of them, I'm then taking a little bit of Sea Nymph and what I've done, Sea Nymph is one of the glass gel polishes. Um, it is a really pretty colour but it, it's very very pigmented so what I've done is decant a little bit and mixed again some top coat in there just to shear it out a little bit and I'm applying it in the same way I did with the other one with my brush just to kind of make a nice coverage. I don't want it to cover all of the brown completely which is why I've sheared it out. So I'm going to do this again to both tips and then I'm going to cure in my lamp and we're going to do the next phase of the um, next phase of the dots basically. Okay, so for the next one we're going to take some cocoa and some sea nymph and give them a mix together and it's just going to create a slightly different shade of brown and we're going to put this over the same dots that we did to start with. Now I like to overlap them in different places so I won't cover the whole thing completely on some of them. What I will do is I'll cover a section of it and on another one I will actually go over out of the line slightly if that makes sense on where the other one is just to kind of add a little bit more depth and shading so you can see on this one here where I literally didn't go completely um, all over I actually went further out slightly and this is just going to add some more depth and sort of um, like colouring and design to it and again I'm going to do this to both of them I have put this over top coat again to get that sort of bloomed effect I'm going to cure in the lamp and just do both. If 
I've got this really pretty foil that has like an oil slick look to it in places and this is like one of those gold leaf things so I've just broken it up and I'm going to add this onto the design as well so just like before I'm going to put some top coat on here and I'm then going to take onyx which is the black from nail chemi and I'm just using a th very very small amount you can see I'm not putting much on my brush at all and I'm just going to dot this on to the design again we put the top coat down to bloom it out and this to me is like the key part when you're adding the black the black can be very very intense so actually having the top coat to bloom it out like I said it feathers those edges and it gives it that more natural look so as you can see I'm not putting the black all over the design I'm just putting it in places on the brown spots that we did before and again over, over going over the edges of it ever so slightly and you can already see the colour difference. What I will also do is if I feel like I've got quite a lot of blank space but I don't want brown dots I will just put a tiny little blob of the black and let it bloom out and it fills in that gap really really nicely. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in my foil. So I'm just taking a really fine, this is like a diddy, diddy detailer sort of brush. Um, and I'm just going to pick up those loose little bits of the foil. Now I don't want to overload the design with foil, but I want just those little bits that it's going to be hidden under a layer of gel polish again anyway. But it just adds that little something to the design. And this is going to tie these nails in really nicely with the blue ones because the blue ones are going to have some foil on. So I'm going to do this to both of them. Once you're happy, cure it in the lamp. So I'm just going to let you watch me do exactly the same thing to this one. So both of these have been cured and you can already see like the depth and the difference and the detail in them. Like I said they don't have to be exactly perfect um, but I just think they're really really cool. So for the final layer I am mixing some honeysuckle with some sea nymph and a tiny 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 little bit of cocoa along with some top coat to thin it all out and shear it all out and I'm adding this as like the final top layer and you can see it just pulls everything together it makes the nail a little less um, transparent so you can still just about see the tip stand if it was on a natural nail obviously um, it would look a bit more natural than a bright pink tip holder but you can just see how it ties it all together so as you can see I'm just mixing a little bit more in for this other one because it's a little bit more yellow and sheer instead of a little bit more brown and orange again it's not a problem it's fine and I'm just going to pop this all over these nails and it's just going to give that foil a completely different look as well so once I'm happy with like how this is all layered up I'm going to cure this in my lamp I love how it looks I've also repeated that exact process on my blue ones after they've been capped and everything I've put the foil in and you can see I've put the foil over the two blended areas so I've literally for the tortoiseshell design I've just repeated everything I showed you for the other two I'm now going to matte this so I've obviously buffed my acrylic and everything and I've matted over the blue section only and the foil I have kept the tortoiseshell design completely shiny because I wanted the shininess. I've then buffed this full cover tip um, and I'm taking some crystal totalis which is the gem glue and I'm just putting this down the center of the nail. Now I actually got really fed up with the placement of these so I can't find my crystal picker upper so I used a dotting tool with some blue tack on. I need to buy a new one, um, a new crystal picker upper. Yeah, 
Um, so I'm just using, like I said, a fine liner and a dotting tool. Um, but I put the crystal totalis down the center of the nail, not the whole way down. Um, and then I'm also putting some matte top coat over. I'm not curing it, but the reason I'm putting the matte top coat over is so we don't have any shiny bits around the crystals and the caviar beads. I spread this up because you don't want to see me fighting with these uh, crystals. But I'm just going to put them on the nail in that centre point over the gem glue. And I'm then going to take some caviar beads and put them around the design to kind of lock it in. And I suppose it looks a bit like a ring, you know, when your ring's got the, like, the little studs around it. It was all like encased. I'm going to add that in and I'm then going to cure this in my lamp. This was so hard without a proper crystal picker upper. Um, the dotting tool, it did okay though. The dotting tool and the blue tack did okay. I probably would have put more gems on this as well, but my crystal placement isn't my um, strongest thing that I did. But overall, I really like how it came out though. So I cure this in my lamp once I'm happy with it all. And cue fantastic transition. transition. Here is the design. And I am so pleased with how it came out. I think the contrast between all is fab. Um, but yeah, I love this design. I hope you guys have liked this week's video too. And I'll see you in the next one.